For your linoleum print, you'll want to make some sketches first. The linoleum block that I have is 4 inches by 4 inches, or about 10 centimeters. And so with my uh, printout, I have already a square that's that size that I'm doing my sketch in. If I were to do a sketch like this that has a lot of white in the background, that would inv involve a whole lot more carving compared to a sketch that has more gray and black. You'll also notice that with the white, there can be some rough texture that happens from carving out from both sides. So if you'd rather have a crisp, cleaner image, again, you'd want to have more black and gray as compared to more white. With the sketch, you can see that I have my blacks and a black outline. My gray will be the cat face itself. And then I'll also have a white background that will have a lot of cutouts. I've made sure to do my sketch in a number two pencil instead of a, a mechanical pencil because that will be an easier graphite transfer. Mechanical pencils are made to not break, so that also makes it more difficult for them to rub off. So I want to make sure I've bared down hard when I've drawn my sketch, and I want to make sure it's in a number two pencil. When I'm happy with my sketch, I can take my, my linoleum block and line it up with the square and then if I carefully flip it over onto the back. I want to hold it to make sure it doesn't move around too much and a wooden object like a ruler is great for transferring. I to make sure that the image doesn't go anywhere with my left hand and I'm transferring the image with my right by rubbing it. If I hold down one end, I can peek with the other to see how my transfer is coming. And I can see I need to rub a little bit more in the top corner. Alright, this looks good. Now, on this first side, this will be my gray side that I will print my gray color with. So I want to leave my gray and carve out my black, or carve out my white. I don't have to worry about my black. I'm only gonna carve out my white on this gray side. When using a linoleum cutter, I want to be careful because while the blade isn't super sharp, it is still sharp enough to cut things unintentionally. So again, on this side, I'll be cutting out my white and I'm gonna start off with a small blade as opposed to a medium or a larger blade. When carving, it's like you're scooping out the top layer. You don't want to go too deep, but you do want to go deep enough that you can tell you've cut some of the material out. Take your time because you can't put back whatever you carve out. So if you make a mistake, you can't turn back from that and have to keep on going. Instead of turning the blade, for curves and turns, I recommend you turn the linoleum block itself. It makes cutting out corners and turns much easier. Make sure to throw away your linoleum scraps. There shouldn't be any left on your table or the floor after you're finished. Okay, after you've carved out all of your white out of your gray side, then you'll move on to your black side. You'll transfer the same exact image onto the other side of the linoleum block.
Now on this side, you're gonna do exactly what you did to the, to the other side. You're gonna carve out the white, but you're also gonna carve out your gray because this is your black side. You want your black to show, but you don't want your white or your gray to show. So you're gonna carve both of those out. You're gonna carve the white and the gray out. When you're ready to print, you're going to take your stamp, which will have the first side that you carved out, which is your gray side, and then the second side that you carved out, which is your black side. You're going to use your gray side first. So I'm going to take my stamp and one of the papers that I selected to be my white, and you're going to use printing ink. You don't need to use a whole ton, it's kind of like toothpaste. You just want enough that it shows up. And then you're gonna use the roller, the brayer, and get it to that cons uh, sticky consistency. You don't want a whole ton of ink on your roller, but you do want enough to coat it so that it transfers. After you have enough ink on there, you're going to take your white paper, or what would have been your white lines, line it up, press it down. You can either use the Baron to press on top of it, or you could use a clean dry roller to also help you transfer it. You just want to make sure you're pressing down so that it doesn't slide around on you and mess up your image. All right, after you're happy with that, you peel it off. And that's your gray on top of your white. Now, what you're gonna do is take your black side. For my black, I'm actually gonna make purple. And because I don't have any purple left, I'm gonna mix red and blue. And again, only a little bit, like toothpaste them out, not a whole ton. And I'm gonna mix them. That makes a very dark purple. If I wanted to lighten it up, I could add a little bit of white, but I want this dark purple. So I'm gonna put it on my black side. And now I'm gonna take my paper again and I wanna make sure it's like a mirror. Uh, so I, when I put it on it, it'll line up. I don't wanna put it sideways. I don't wanna put it upside down. I wanna put it like a mirror. So I'm also gonna lay this on top. And again, I'm either gonna use the bear or the roller to transfer it. That is my final print. Now, I can print my other papers. I would again flip back to the gray. If I wanted to go from blue to a neighbor color light purple, I wouldn't have to really wash this off. It would just blend together on the stamp. But if I went from a blue to say a yellow, I wanna go to the sink and wash this off because if the two mix, it's gonna make a green that I don't want. Um, you'll do the same thing. You need four prints for this and then you'll also be making a border for it. We're gonna move these over. We're not gonna leave them at the printing table. We're gonna move them over to a tarp so they can dry instead of taking up space at this very messy printing table. This is one of the tarps where you can let your prints dry. And after they are dry, you can take your prints and glue them onto your borders like this to complete the project.